What's up, everybody? I'm back. Let's talk about guns. Guns are cool. I like guns. Um, it's really hard and it's really fun to shoot. It takes a lot of practice. It's also the uh, cheapest life insurance you can get. And, you know, God forbid you ever have to use one in self-defense, but you're going to be pretty happy that you have one on you if, you know, it were to hit the fan. When I first got into shooting, I noticed it was pretty intimidating because it felt like everybody knew everything already. It's like there's a lot of makers and calibers and numbers and brands and there's a lot of opinions. This thing is great. This one is awful. You, ah, anyways. So I want to make a little video series and just like basic uh, firearms handling and safety stuff like that. And just maybe like if you're a little unsure but curious about this stuff, get you uh, a little more confident on, you know, discovering the beautiful world of weapons for yourself. So uh, keep swiping that way and, and check these videos out. Cool? Okay. Okay, first things first, let's talk about safety. The most important thing of all, there are four basic rules of uh, firearm safety that you should be aware of and always abide by. First one is treat every gun as if it's loaded. Doesn't matter if someone cleared it and gave it to you, you clear it and you make sure. Okay, and I will show you in the next video on how to do that. Next one is uh, never point a gun at anything you're not intending to shoot. Harder than it seems but never ever point a gun in an unsafe direction even if you just cleared it then you know it's not loaded so that's number two number three is keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot we call this trigger discipline i will show you this in the next video as well and the last one is be aware of what's behind and in front of what you're intending to fire at so even if you're at the shooting range or whatever the scenario might be know what's in front and behind because bullets do travel okay let's talk about clearing a gun that is making sure that it is empty we're gonna do a few different things here's one of my guns this is a 6rp 2022 you don't have to worry about the numbers but here's what you're gonna do there's uh we call the mag release also there's no one here so i can't point this in an unsafe direction i'm gonna hit the mag release out comes the mag i can see it's empty then I'm gonna rack the slide and I'm gonna make sure it's empty. I'm never gonna look into that end of the barrel. I mean, even, I'm not gonna even put my fingers in front of it because I know my second rule, I'm never gonna point this in an unsafe direction. That includes me or my finger. But after I check this, I can even give it a little, a little wiggle wiggle. There's absolutely nothing cool. And I know my clip. I clip magazine called what you want is also empty. This gun is now clear. Until I look away for 10 seconds or I put it down or whatever I do, I give it to someone else, my buddy at the shooting range, and he gives it back to me. Because then it's loaded again, as far as I know. So that means as soon as it's back in my hand, I'm going to check it again. It's empty. All right, cool. Let's party. There are many different kinds of guns, but clearing them is largely uh, follows the same basic principle. Here's a much smaller gun. This is a Springfield uh, Armory Hellcat. It's tiny. I uh, keep it on me almost uh, all the time. Same thing. We have a little uh, mag release, little button here. Click that. Whoop! Out comes the magazine. Then I'm gonna rack it. I'm gonna make sure there's nothing in the chamber. I'm also not going to look into that end because that would be a silly thing to do. But now I know the gun is empty. So this one is safe. Here's a much bigger gun. This is a Desert Eagle, very famous movie gun. You see people run around and shoot these like single-handed. Not very realistic. This is very big, it's heavy, and it kablams pretty loud. But to clear it, I do the same thing. I got my little mag release, right? This goes out. I'm going to rack the slide. There's nothing in the barrel. I know this gun is safe. I can go about my day. Short video on how to rack the slide and lock the slide back. So we have this little fella. This shows up in different configurations and different guns, but it's largely the same. What I do is I'm going to push this up with my right thumb as I pull this slide back. And... If you happen to be a woman, you know, little girly hands, little flimsy girly wrists and all that stuff. It, this can be hard, you know, just pinching it. So what I like to do with all guns, whether I have flimsy girl hands or not, I put my left hand over. Oh, trigger discipline, right? 
And then rather than pulling with this hand, I'm going to push with this hand. Yoink. Now it doesn't matter if I use my big gun, like this fella. So I'm just very gently pressing up with my right thumb. I grab it, I push back, and now it's locked. And then to slide it back again, I just push the slide release. On my somewhat smaller gun, same thing, right? So to rack it, finger off the trigger. I'm going to put my left hand over, and then I'm just going to push away. And all the while, I'm pressing upwards with my thumb. Now it's locked in the back position. I make sure the chamber is empty. Boom, let's party. Let's talk about the trigger discipline. It's this. Once you know this, watching Hollywood movies pre-John Wick is going to drive you crazy. One of my favorites ever, Arnold. If you watch Commando, he walks around the whole uh, movie of Commando with his finger on the trigger on an M16, whatever rifle he has, and he's pointing it at everybody in his team all the time. But hey, man, such were the 80s. Trigger discipline just means you're going to keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. You're not going to keep it down here, you're not going to keep it in your nose, and maybe your nose, but you're going to keep it right here until you're ready to shoot. So it doesn't matter if the gun is loaded, not loaded, if you're at the range, whatever. Finger stays off the trigger until you're ready to shoot, okay? So if I'm racking it, so I'm clearing the gun. Yeah, let's do this in the right order. I'm clearing the gun. I'll get the magazine. I rack it. See, my finger just stays there. It never goes here until I'm at the range or wherever I'm at. I'm ready to shoot. Now I can put my finger on the trigger. Till then, finger stays up. Highly recommend you practice putting the gun down. And we always put the gun down, finger off the trigger, and put it down this way. We never want to put it down this way because now you have to slide your hand out. Then you might, you might get to the trigger as you slide your, slide your hand out. So finger stays off the trigger. We only put the gun down like this. Cool? Awesome. Let's talk about grip. Very, very important. I'd say the two most important things in getting bullets to go where you want them to is your grip and your sight picture. So here's the video for your grip. Here's what I would recommend. Get your right hand. Going to hold it like this. Or we can hold it like this. But let's hold it like this. Going to take your left hand. See how my meat apart, my thumbs kind of join. Then the next. So let's call this one. Here's two. Here's three. I wrap my left hand around my right hand. Four is going to be left thumb. Five is going to be left thumb. You're probably going to have to watch this a bunch of times. But here it is again. This is one. Thumbs meet. Very close, very tight. That's two. Three, wrap my hands. Four thumb, five thumb. From here, I'm ready to do some work. Again, one, two, three, four. Cool. Now let's work grip on a real gun. I just cleared this. Empty. Empty. Okay. Good job, John. Here's my step one. I have my fingers wrapped. Trigger discipline, right? So that is one. Here's two. So now my thumbs meet. Here's three. Here's four thumb. Here's five thumb. This is everything. A good grip is everything. Once you start shooting, you'll see what I'm talking about. Let's do that one more time. This is one. Also, I want to make sure my thumb is all the way up in the groove here. Don't hold down here. Don't do this. Whatever weird shit you see in uh, pre-John Wick movies. So thank you, Terran Tactical and Keanu Reeves. And Chad, whatever the director's name. Trigger a discipline. This is one. Wrap my thumbs. There's no gap there. Three is wrapping my fingers. Four thumb, five thumb. Then what you want to do. There's a lot of debate. Should you squeeze the gun really hard? Should you be kind of relaxed? Uh, I've experimented a lot with this. What works best for me is I'm pretty loose. Loose. I'm never loose, but somewhere, somewhat more relaxed in my trigger hand, my right hand. I squeeze pretty hard with my left. And then what I do is I push with my right arm and I pull with my left arm. So if I put all this together, and here's my one trigger discipline, yeah. Here's my one, 
two, three, four, five. The more you do, the easier you get. Then I'm gonna push with my right. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm pushing with my right and I'm pulling with my left. Now when I have my side picture, I can move to the trigger and pop goes the weasel. Let's talk about side picture. The other major, major thing in shooting. First of all, we gotta figure out which is your dominant eye. Make a teeny tiny little hole between your, between your hands like so. And then find something, a, a, you know, light switch, something that's reasonably far away and make sure it's visible in your little, little hole. Like for me, you can't see it because it's off camera, but I have a little, uh, little action figure over there. So I make sure I can see him in my little, little hand hole. And then I close one eye. And the one eye where you see whatever you're looking at, that's your dominant eye. That's the eye you're going to be using for shooting. Understand? Make a look at something, something small, through your little hand hole at arm's length. Close one eye, whichever eye you're seeing with, that's going to be your dominant eye. There's also a lot of debate if you should shoot one eye or two eye. I always shoot both eyes open because if shit were to hit the fan, God forbid that it does, I'm not going to have time to. Ima imagine you're in an active shooter scenario, whatever, some home invasion. You're going to have time to. Hold on. Probably not. With adrenaline and all that stuff, you're going to, your eyes are going to be like this. So I want to practice shooting both, both eyes open. So let me tell you how I do that. So what you want to do, this is going to feel a little weird for me. You have your front sight and your rear sight. You want to get these bad boys to line up. When you have these lined up and you're using your proper grip like we talked about, the uh, bullet should reasonably go to where you're pointing. I hope that makes sense. So we want to get these guys to line up. All right, so more on eyesight, and this is the tricky one. How are you going to see? So a good way to get used to shooting both eyes open. I, I know a lot of people say to focus on the front sight, but what happens for me is whatever I'm aiming at just becomes too super blurry, too far away, I can't see anything. So I personally focus on the target, and then I make sure these line up in my dominant eye. And this takes some practice, but it, it can be done. And I feel it's a gigantic advantage when I have to lock in on something fast. You know what we did with finding your dominant eye? You can close one eye, line up your sights so it's in your dominant eye. In my case, it's my right eye. So I have that lined up. And then when I open both eyes, the way I can still see perfectly the sights lined up, but I can focus on the target behind it. To me, that's the only way to do it. I know there's definitely uh, differing opinions about this, but that works for me. All right, let's talk about loading the gun. Here I have a clipper magazine. Uh, you can yell at me all you want, uh, whichever it is. It doesn't matter. This is a dud. This will not go bang no matter what I do to it. You have your magazine. Make sure the lip is facing the same way that the bullet is going to go flying later. Not this one, because this is a dud. Then you just push it down. Let me see if I can do this. You can see it. Just push it down. Push it down and slide it in. Isn't that a white, white snake song? So imagine if I did that 10 times or however. This is a California compliant magazine, so it only holds 10 rounds. They're not very smart over there. Anyways, so how do we get this into the gun? Easy piece of lemon squeeze it. Here's my trusty six organ. I'm gonna push it in until it goes click. Now can I shoot? No, I cannot, because it's not in the chamber yet. That's where you gotta rack, uh, rack the gun. And th this all comes back to what we just talked about. My finger stays off the trigger. I've seen a million videos of people with their finger on the trigger, racking it, and kablam, it goes up in the fucking ceiling, or they shoot through the wall, so God forbid they hit someone else. And you see this at shooting ranges and stuff too. It drives me crazy. Finger off the fucking trigger. Cool. So I know that I have my round one round in here. I put it in. Finger sits off the trigger. I rack the way I showed you earlier. Solid grip. Push away. Now it's in the chamber. If I press the trigger, gun goes boom. Here's another important thing. If I 
take the magazine out where the bullet go it's in the chamber even without the magazine gun will still go bang oh cock how do i clear it say i'm at the shooting range the gun is jamming i don't know what's going on i'm a i'm a newbie i'm gonna clear the gun i take the magazine out oh there it is and not only do i do that but i check it i visually inspect there's nothing in here there's nothing in there okay gun is safe gun is clear Make sense? So now to calibers and all that fun stuff. There's a million numbers, and everybody seems to know what everything means, except you, because you're a gun noob. Uh, you're like, hey, what? Here's the most common caliber for handguns. It's a nine millimeter. It has plenty of stop and power, and it will poke a little nice hole in just about anything you shoot at it. Don't worry about 45 ACP or 44 Magnum or 50 Action Express. Don't worry about any of this. You need to get yourself a nice little nine mil. For instance, this gun, nine mil. This gun, also nine mil. Ooh, this one shoots forward four magnum. It looks like this, quite a bit bigger. Uh, they also chamber this in 50 cal, which is the more famous, I guess. I got this during the lockdown, so finding ammo was impossible, but. Get yourself a 9mm, all you need. Also about buying your first gun. If you don't know anything, don't worry about it. The gun community people are super nice and helpful. You can go to your gun store. There is one near where you live if you're in America for sure. You can be like, hey, uh, I'm a newbie, uh, but I'm interested in buying my first hand handgun. And they're going to ask you, so what are you looking for? You're like, yeah, I have no idea. Uh, some guy on the internet told me to get a 9mm. Uh, my hands look like this. What would you recommend? So if you're a smaller person, you'll have smaller hands. So holding on to something big is going to be very uncomfortable for you. So find something that fits in your hands well. You know how to grip now. And make sure you don't point it at anyone in the gun store. You can aim at the floor. Um, but they will help you. And just give them, my budget is so and so much money, you know, that I'm willing to spend on this. What would you recommend for me? And they will help you. They're awesome people. All right, you bought your first gun, you're ready to go to the range, you're all excited, a little nervous. What are you going to do? What to think about? Well, just let them know it's your first time. I would highly, highly recommend get firearms instruction by a qualified instructor. There's a lot of ex-military guys that start their own stuff. Every shooting range has uh, firearms instruction. Take a course. It will be money well spent. Uh, so you walk in there. It's going to be going off bang, bang, bang everywhere. It's perfectly normal and okay that you flinch every time a, you know, a round goes off. It's natural. You'll get used to it. I flinched first time I went to range two, and everybody in there that's so confident and knows everything about guns, they also flinched. The natural reaction, don't worry about it. You'll be fine. All right, make sure you wear a full t-shirt, like be dressed, no tank tops, anything like that. It's not about being cool, but like the casings, when you shoot, the casing will go flying and it's very, very hot and it can land. If you're a woman, I've seen it go, you know, in the cleavage, it can land in back behind you in your neck. And the worst thing that can happen is that you're holding on to the gun. And I saw a video like this just yesterday. Casing lands in the guy's hoodie and he starts looking for it with the gun in his hand and he fires off two rounds, almost shooting the range officer. Don't be that guy. So wear something like pants, close toe shoes, wear a t-shirt or a long sleeve, no hoodies. And um, if anything happens, put the gun down, trigger finger up, like I told you. Thank you. The next thing about your first time at the range, if you never shot a gun before, do this. Just load it with one round to begin with. So, got my dud here. I'm going to call it Dudley Moore from now on. So, this is my first time I'm at the range. It's fucking going off everywhere. I have my gun. Okay, I watched John's video. I know it's, I'm going to pop this. And why do I only load it with one, with one round? It's because if anything happens, if you freak out when you shoot it, you get to, because it's an explosion in your hand and it, it kablams pretty loud and it kicks and it does all those things, right? You get used to it, but if you drop it, nothing can happen because you already fired off the only round. So if it's your first time ever, load it one round, you put it in, trigger discipline, bracket, get your grip, take aim, boom. You're probably going to miss because <laughs> shooting is hard. But if anything happens, the gun is now empty, okay?
Okay, finally, like if anything happens, if the gun jams and guns do jam, it can be many reasons. If you're limp wristing, you know, if you're not stable enough, the gun can't recoil and load the next uh, round for you. He might be dirty, you might be shooting subpar ammo. There's many, many reasons why a gun can jam. Anything happens, just put it down and call the range officer. Excuse me, sir, or ma'am, it's probably going to be a dude. Uh, my gun is jammed, I don't know what to do. You're always going to point down range, right? So don't, hey, can someone help me? Just put it down. Anything happens, whatever it is, you don't know what it is. You don't have to clear it yet and all that stuff. Just put it down and ask for help. No one's going to judge you. Everything is fine. They're great people and they want you to get better at shooting. Okay, I think that was it. I hope this uh, was helpful for some people. If you have any comments, just let me know. Shoot me a DM. If you want to learn more about this stuff, don't hesitate to ask. And uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful and I uh, hope you have a great time shooting your new gun and all that stuff. Catch you later.